Should we worry about iron as vegans and plant-based eaters? Welcome to the Vegan Family Kitchen. This is Brigitte Jem, your host, and today I will share my views as a meal planner, as a woman, and as a mother on the topic of iron. Iron is a common concern of well-meaning friends and relatives when they learn that a loved one is going vegan or committing to eating more plants and fewer animals. Since most people think of meat as the source of the most abundant and easiest to absorb iron, isn't foregoing animal products putting you at risk for iron deficiency? Unfortunately, many medical professionals contribute to spreading this outdated belief despite ample scientific evidence to the contrary. As someone who decides what's for dinner for other people in the vegan family meal plans and vegan mini meal plans, I see it as my responsibility to stay informed on the topic of iron for vegans and share my views and sources of information. Spoiler alert, it is not a big deal for most people, which does not mean that we shouldn't be paying attention to this critical mineral when we're planning our meals. I am an educator, meal planner, a sociologist, but not a medical professional. I'm educated on the topic of nutrition. I am trained at critically assessing sources of information, including peer-reviewed publications. This podcast episode constitutes my opinion on the topic of nutritional iron. I encourage you to engage with other legitimate sources of information, including the many that I list in the corresponding blog post on my website. If you have health concern relative to iron deficiency or anemia symptoms, please consult with a plant-friendly medical professional or registered dietitian. Again, you can find directories listed in the blog post on my website, veganfamilykitchen.com slash iron dash four dash vegans. So why does iron even matter? In simplified terms, iron is essential to the production of red blood cells, which transport oxygen to our muscles and to a number of other critical functions in our bodies. There are three main ways we can end up lacking in iron. One, we can consume too little iron in our food. Two, we may not be absorbing iron properly. Or three, some people are losing blood cells faster than they are making them by bleeding, basically. Anemia happens when we have too little hemoglobin, which is the protein that transports oxygen, in our body. Hemoglobin can be measured from just a few drops of blood, something that a nurse will do in seconds by pricking your finger if you want to give blood, for example. Some typical symptoms of anemia include fatigue, weakness, paleness, and shortness of breath. Anemia is very, very common worldwide, affecting perhaps up to a third of the world population, but it is much less prevalent in developed countries. A little bit over 5% of Americans are thought to meet the criteria for anemia from a clinical perspective. Women, non-whites, and elders are at higher risk. Anemia in infants and children is a very serious problem that can negatively impact growth and cognitive development. It impacts poor people and those living with discrimination most tragically by creating a poverty trap. Poor diet leads to anemia, which leads to difficulty working or learning in school, which further reduces one's odds of getting out of poverty. Most healthy people's bodies are excellent at regulating iron. When we don't have much, more will be absorbed from what we eat. When we have more than enough, the extra may get stored at, as ferritin. If one suddenly faces a shortage of food or of dietary iron or some blood loss, loss for example menstruation, the body will draw from its stores to continue functioning normally. What about the difference between heme and non-heme iron? What is the difference? The root word heme means blood. Heme iron is basically the hemoglobin of animals. Animals' muscles, organs like the liver, and of course blood sausage, aka black pudding, are sources of heme iron. Non-heme iron is, well, everything else. Most of the animals that humans consume, like pigs, cows, and chickens, are fed a plant-based diet, so the iron in meat comes from plants. 
Heme iron is more readily absorbed by our bodies and it leads to higher ferritin levels. This may be a good thing if one's ferritin is extremely low or if faced with periods of hunger and deficient nutrition. However, in developed countries where overnutrition is a much greater problem, consumption of heme iron has been associated with an increased risk of chronic disease such as diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and colorectal cancer. This is a, a direct quote from uh, an article published in um, the scientific journal Nutrients by Craig et al. in 2021. Is vegan iron deficiency a thing? The term iron deficiency is often used as shorthand for low ferritin, which may or may not be accompanied by symptoms of anemia. In fact, what low ferritin indicates is iron deficiency risk. Considering that the average American consumes more than 200 pounds of meat every year, average ferritin numbers tend to run pretty high, and the lower ferritin that many herbivores, like me, would have may concern some health professionals, even if those ferritin levels are not outside of normal range. Such concerns are not founded in their authoritative 2021 nutrients paper titled The Safe and Effective Use of Plant-Based Diets with Guidelines for Health Professionals. Craig and colleagues summarize the scientific literature. Open quote. Vegetarians who eat a varied and well-balanced diet do not appear to be at any greater risk of iron deficiency anemia than omnivores. Hemoglobin levels of the two dietary groups normally show no significant differences. Additional studies of iron deficiency in vegetarians are needed before definitive conclusions can be reached. A varied diet that is rich in whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, dried fruits, iron-fortified cereal products, and green leafy vegetables provides an adequate iron intake. Vegetarian diets generally contain as much or more iron than omnivore diets. End quote. The authors use the word vegetarian here, but you probably notice the absence of eggs and dairy from the list of foods to consume. A systematic review of the evidence specific to vegans also support this. This is from um, Bakaludi et al. 2021, and they say, open quote, Vegan diets are not related to deficiencies in vitamin A, B1, B6, C, E, iron, phosphorus, magnesium, copper, and folate, and have low glycemic load, end quote. In case of famine or soybean shortage, it is true that vegans may be at greater risk of iron deficiency. I don't want to downplay those concerns since climate extremes will likely disrupt agriculture over the coming decades. However, given a steady access to whole grains and legumes, plant-based eaters will be all right. Should vegans get their iron tested? Some health professionals and influencers suggest that healthy plant-based eaters should get their blood levels of various nutrients, including iron, tested on a yearly basis as precaution. I personally refuse to get blood drawn for tests that are not medically required, except perhaps for research purposes. If you are experiencing any kind of concerning health issues, such as symptoms of anemia, that do not promptly resolve with lifestyle improvements to diet, exercise, sleep, and stress management, then of course further investigation is warranted. That assumes that vitamin B12 is adequately supplemented, something every person with a plant-predominant diet should do, and not just vegans. I have a whole blog post on this topic. Please do read it if you haven't already. This being said, I always get a nudge of reassurance when I donate blood twice per year, and the nurse announces that my hemoglobin is, as a, is at a very healthy level. Not bad for a vegan, I like to say, but the nurse doesn't even bat an eye. I bet it's not the first time she's heard it. How to ensure a steady supply of iron for vegans? Well, you gotta cook iron-rich foods. As noted in the plant-based dietary guidelines cited above, a varied plant-based diet that's rich in whole foods has all the iron we need. Even better, when we're running a little low, our bodies will absorb more. 
Because people who are menstruating and growing infants and children need a greater supply of daily iron, a recommended 18 milligrams per day compared to adult men's 8 milligrams per day, it is still important to pay attention to sources of iron and make sure that they are present at every meal. My favorite iron-rich plant foods are number one, soybeans like edamame, four milligrams per cup, tofu like firm tofu, three milligram per half cup serving, other beans and lentils like black beans and chickpeas, they come in at five milligram per cooked cup, always a must in any soup, whole grains, Sometimes people don't think of whole grains as a source of iron, but oats, for example, have 3 mg per dry cup. Vegetables that are high in iron, like asparagus, who knew 4.4 mg per cup, that's a lot. Um, dark leafy greens, including kale, they don't have as much as we'd like to think sometimes. Kale, only 0.3 mg per cup, but it's very high in vitamin C and it's coming straight in. Seeds like chia seeds, 3 mg per quarter cup serving, fantastic mixed in overnight oats. Dried fruit like raisins, 4 mg per cup. It's a great topping on satisfying salads. You probably don't want to eat a whole cup of them though. Black strap molasses, once you get used to it, you will like it better than maple syrup and it has a whooping 7 mg per 2 tablespoons. I love it on waffles. I also found out recently that jackfruit has a lot of iron. So don't shy away from all of those wonderful plant foods. All of them are foods that you should be eating anyway. And I make sure to feature them all in my vegan meal plans. If you fill your plate with those plant foods every day, you will have plenty of incoming iron and many more nutrients too. How to enhance iron absorption for vegans and frankly for everyone else. I have gathered the best tips for enhancing iron absorption in the book Nourish, the Definitive Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Families by Reshma Shaw and Brenda Davis. Here are some of the easiest ways to help our bodies absorb the iron in our food. The top tip is to serve iron-rich foods with vitamin C. Deglaze your soup pots and your stir-fry skillets with lemon or lime juice. Eat soy. The ferritin from soy is one of the most easily absorbed sources of iron. Soak your beans and lentils. Beans in lentils, legumes, have phytates that can inhibit iron absorption, although they have other health benefits, uh, but they are reduced, those phytates, by sprouting, soaking, cooking, fermenting, and leavening. Avoid dairy, which goes without saying for so many reasons, but consuming calcium-rich dairy at the same time as iron-rich foods can inhibit the absorption of iron. Finally, if you want to drink tea, do it in between meals, not at the same time. The polyphenolic compounds in tea, chocolate, spinach, and some other foods can inhibit iron absorption. All of this being said, please do not ignore signs of anemia. If This is not medical advice. This is motherly common sense. If you are feeling fatigue or any other sign of anemia, you probably should consider assessing the basic pillars of your lifestyle. Eating a sufficient, balanced, and diverse diet, getting enough moderate exercise, sleeping enough, managing your stress, in addition to taking a sufficient and regular supplement of B12 vitamin. If addressing all of that does not promptly resolve your symptoms, please get medical attention. Healthy plant-based diets are beneficial for our health, but they are not a cloak of immortality. So please do not ignore the messages from your body. What about cooking in cast iron or using an iron fish? Uh, cooking in cast iron software or using one of those lucky iron fish may marginally improve the amount of iron in your food, especially if you're cooking with acidic foods that are rich in vitamin C. It's also perfectly safe to do, but just don't count on it to make such a big difference in your iron intake, especially if your skillet is well seasoned, in which case it will not be releasing so much iron anymore. What about vegan athletes? There are special considerations for plant-based athletes, especially women regarding iron, including the risk of suffering from runner's anemia due to the destruction of red blood cells when hitting the pavement at speed and repeatedly. 
Even those in low-impact sports should make sure to learn more. There's an excellent article by Pamela Ferguson, registered dietitian, on the No Meat Athlete website. It's called Iron for the Vegan Female Athlete, a Primer. And I recommend that men, uh, male athletes, read it as well. So the link is in my original blog post on this topic. Finally, some f special considerations when transitioning to plant-based eating. Something I've heard about often in plant-friendly medical circles, but I've never traced it to an actual peer-reviewed study, is that people who transition to a 100% plant-based diet overnight may find themselves feeling more fatigued than people who transition progressively. One tentative theory seems to be that because their body was used to getting a high supply of some easily absorbable nutrients like heme iron, their cells might struggle at first to adapt to absorb the nutrients in their full plant package. For that reason, and because people who transition to vegan overnight have a lesser chance of sticking with their new diet over the long term, I always recommend a progressive transition. Instead of quitting meat, eggs, and dairy cold tofu, try increasing the share of plant foods on your plate over a few weeks or a few months. If you're transitioning overnight, because of the urgent admonishment from a medical professional, make sure that you get all the support you need during the process. In the blog post, there are some resources to go further and learn more. Go to veganfamilykitchen.com slash iron dash four dash vegans and you can click those links and find out more. I also encourage you to attend my upcoming plant-based nutrition hacks workshop. You can register on my website also. I look forward to seeing you again soon in the vegan family kitchen.